All right, welcome everyone to the Eve Gone Concepts. Today's video, as you can see in the background, we set up a Dutch bucket system over here, soil-based Dutch bucket system, and we're gonna set up this 55-gallon drum that's gonna hold eight tomato plants. All right, maybe I could get more in there, but I'm gonna just shoot for eight, and for material I'm gonna pack it with, I have uh, two six-gallon buckets of worm castings here, and I have some sawdust with rabbit manure. I got some... Um, shredded paper last year's compost here last year's compost as well here i got some sawdust and more rabbit manure here and some compost here so we're going to fill this bin with all that stuff we're going to plant our tomatoes and um with, with this full, i have um i put my cans two cans so it doesn't clog so the water will flow straight on through yeah. here we're going to pack this stuff with all kinds of stuff that we made soil that we made ourselves Again, this compost isn't quite done, but it will be done by the end of this grow season. So we're using it that much quicker. There's no smell to it. I think this is probably about four months old or something like that. So this is a 55 gallon drum, as you can see. I put it on a cement, little cement slab here so I can grow tomatoes and have a lawn. That's kind of exciting now, isn't it? So let's do that. Let's pack this. Let's see if I can't get this. I have this rinky-dink, my tripod that I just made. Isn't that great? Let's try that. How's that look? Can't really see, huh? What's that? Like that? All right, that's good enough, I guess. All right, let's start with this cardboard here. I'll take as much tape off of it as I can without wasting too much time. Alright, it's good to wet this because it would stick to the, it would be easier to manage when you wet it. But this will give these worms, I'm not going to add any worms in here because there's a ton of babies in my castings, no doubt. So I'm just going to line it with all this cardboard or PUD, potential urban duff. Duff again, Detrius under forest floor. PUD, cardboard, newspaper, it's all. Hut. Potential urban duff. This is how we close the loop, folks. And I'm taking full control over all my aspects of the garden. From the soil in this 55 gallon drum to the irrigation that never gets lost. I'm gonna line this whole barrel nice. It's gonna line this heavily with it. Uh, this cardboard will stop the, the barrel from heating up so much and of course, it'll give all kinds of uh, ways for the worms to move around within the tower once they find these little cardboard grooves, right? And by the end of the season, after the tomatoes are all done and fall comes, this is, in all intents and purposes, will be a worm farm. It's a worm farm, it's a composter, because I'm still composting some stuff in here as I'm still growing food. Come on, you can't beat that. That's amazing, right? And similar to the Dutch buckets, those Dutch bucket systems that I set up there, I, I just stuff everything in there. If it's organic, the worms will turn it into useful soil amendment. And so you won't need that miracle grow. This shows you that you can, 55 gallon drums were was cheap, free, I got them free. Um, but you can get them for five bucks easily if you can't find them free. These these openings here, they're just uh, Gatorade bottles, as you know. That's an E-fitting, many uses. And then I got some PVC, about, let's say, $5 of PVC, including the grommet. So this thing was about $5 for this awesome growing tool. And I'll keep you posted on how these tomatoes do. Rid of all that cardboard. Nice, right? Then, what I do is, what am I gonna do? Okay. I should go in the forest back there and get a bunch of sticks and do a little hugel culture at the bottom here. So, it allows for aeration to come through this drainage hole drainage that'll, hole that allow aeration to do that. So, I'm gonna go do that right now, go grab, gather some sticks, and I'll be right back. Don't move. All right, so I got some sticks here. 
pogo culture. We'll add these at the bottom. Get some old, get them old ones, as old as you can. And I'm just gonna put them all like this. Dried old stuff. Right now, what I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna throw some sawdust in there first and foremost. This is all sawdust, and I got the blue tape. That almost fills it up in its own right. This will all drop down later on. I have to have more more to it. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some worm castings. These, I've already taken these out of my basement. I've taken the reds out of them. And no doubt, there's lots and lots of babies, cocoons. This is the biodiversity right here. From all house compost now you might be looking at this beautiful backyard and thinking to yourself mark what the heck you got a beautiful yard back there plenty of land why aren't you growing there well because it's proof of concept this is my eve growing is about growing in urban settings where people don't have that much room to grow food so as you've seen some of my other videos, you can put okay, drums on wheels so you can move them, move them around. One day we'll set it, set it up to mechanics. So these become like some intelligent animal that comes, comes from, from the field to the grower who's waiting in a cool, comfortable place where all the growing needs are met. Um, you put them on wheels, you're on a rooftop, and let's say you, you, you want to have a party on your roof, you can move them all aside. So nothing like a mobile garden, in my opinion. So now I'm going to add the rabbit and sawdust dung that's been resting for a long time. And then, what I'm gonna do, oh, and there's all kinds of reds in here as well. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add last year's, from last year's tower, right here, some soil. And this will have some grit in it and all that good stuff. So this was from one of my towers last year. You know, my sister would always say to me, Mark, you're putting too many plants in here. So this time, with this particular experiment, we're gonna do eight tomato plants. And I won't, I won't show you how we're going to um, uh, stake them up, but I'll, I'll include that. I have an idea. I'm gonna put like a wire mesh around here about that high so these tomatoes will all go up top like that. A little bit of, I'm gonna throw just minced micro shredded paper on there like that and I'll throw some eggshells. I'm gonna go, right now I'm gonna go get a faucet so I can, um, so I can let this, wet this stuff down. So hang on, I'll be right back. All right, so now I'm wetting it down really good. Amazing, we're already almost more than halfway up at the top and I didn't even put my compost in. But this is gonna greatly drop down from what I put once everything gets in there. shake it all down and we'll show you down here is where it'll all come out and of course I'm not going to be see down there that's where it'll all come out all said and done of course I'm going to be wasting a little bit of water while I'm doing this because I don't have the right hose part let's see if we can get you guys see what's going on here that's how full it is already. I barely added anything to that. So that's the deal. And this is just one container. You do similar to the bucket when you're doing a 50, when you're doing these uh, six gallon buckets. It's gonna be a happy little home for all these reds and the amazing biodiversity that follows these heavenly creatures, of course. I don't see it coming out yet. Never clogs. That's the beauty about it too. 
It never clogs, but it's very alarming to think I've put that much water in and it's not coming out yet. Is this the one time it clogs? Alright, let me go shut that off. I'll be right back. Don't move. Alright. I don't see it coming out still. Are we still recording? Yeah, I don't see it coming out still. Let's move it around. Oh, this is going to drop it down wide. I'm going to throw that compost in because I want to get rid of that. Oh, yeah, it's going. All this material's going down, down, down. Plus, I, here it comes. It's starting to come out now. So I have it All right. right. The beauty about this drain, see, you can make it as high as you want. I mean, in fact, I'm going to, let's see. It's all coming out now. All right, so it dropped quite a bit. All right, so what am I going to add next? I'm going to add this compost that's in this wheelbarrow just to get rid of it. Again, it's not quite ready, but by the time the end of the growing season, it'll be completely gone and it'll definitely give the reds something to eat. If the reds are eating, I don't know about, the, about these pine cones that are in here. Some of this stuff. Bum, bum. I think what I'm going to do, I think these are a little acidic. I don't want these pine needles in here. I'm not in charge of this compost. I wouldn't put them in there, but now I'm going to put some regular soil on top of that. Again, from last year's grow towers. Let's say close the loop, folks. This year's, this will be mixed in. After this growing season, this will be this. This will be like this soil after this grow season and that's how you build up your bank of soil I just you gotta start slow start with one tower start with one six gallon bucket if you notice where where my um lady is on the deck there see that pepper tower that is looks like the garden tower doesn't it it's not it's soil based do i go on my my uh hydroponic rant yet no start with one bucket and then you can end up you got a whole line of peppers right there going vertically that one's on wheels and that can be moved around i think at the end i'm going to be putting it over here throw some uh, rabbit manure and sawdust i i had rabbits this, this winter, winter for a little bit until the rabbit lady took them away from me yeah she paid me a little bit for my time but she didn't want me breeding them and she said that she was told she wasn't supposed to do that she didn't tell me until after I put it on, on Craigslist. Then she told me that. And she got very upset with me when I, that she didn't trust that I, I wouldn't sell them. And I would have sold them anyway, so she was right to not trust me. I was going to sell them. I was going to use them for meat if I had to. But anyways, that lady, unfortunately, we're not talking to each other. The rabbit lady, I call her now. But we're not talking to each other because of that incident and how she treated me and that whole situation. Of course, she feels like I treated her bad, but that's why she's not talking to me anymore. But that's another story. Let's get back to this amazing 55-gallon drum build. You know, it's very, very similar, similar to the garden tower, right? Never to be confused with that hydroponics, aeroponics, uh, garden, I mean, tower garden. Never to be confused with the tower garden. The garden Wait, tower is a, similar to this, but this one, I feel, I, th I think it's a little bit better. Certainly a lot cheaper. It's using plastic that's already been made from something else. And this 55 gallon drum will last forever. Very little parts. All right, Mark, what are you gonna do? I'm gonna add some, I guess some more worm castings. And then I'm gonna fill it up with some more water. Look at these worm castings, castings, folks. This is all our house organics. I don't know if you could see, I already, I could see one cocoon. Let's see some kind of a bug, but I see a cocoon there. Put those in here like this. And now I'm gonna get the water gun and water it down some more because I'm already, again, I'm already at the top. See, and this will drop down as it stays more and more. And I'll have to add, while the tomatoes are in there, I'll have to add more and more soil to it and, and soil amendments in the form of worm castings. Be right back. Let me go get the hose. All right. So I'll fill this up. And of course, now I have it set up so. 
it's gonna, it's gonna go, uh, can I see that? So it goes way high in that little Dr. Seuss looking rig. And this will help move it all down better. Worms, by the way, red wigglers, can go a very long time underwater. Very long time. I see a lot of springtails too. too. I don't know. Put a comment. Springtails good or bad for our plants? Put this in here. Move around again. Yeah, that'll help it all go down. Oh yeah, it's already going down. A lot. Yeah, was up to the top. Now it went down again. So now I'm going to stop the water and I'm going to fill it some more with some stuff. Look at it, it's coming out. It's coming out. So let's stop the water so I don't waste it. All this. All that shredded paper. I'm gonna to try to save this water, and I'll use that water to water my tomatoes here before I leave. So I'll add that, and with that, I'm gonna add a bunch of rabbit manure and rabbit manure and sawdust from grass too. Ooh, that stinks like good manure does, like cow manure. Rabbit manure, um, it is said. Like goat manures, you can put directly onto your plants. So let's do that, and I guess we'll put some more caffeine going here. Do what you feel, guys. That's what I say, do what you feel. Do what you feel, free and real. Life is by thing. Now this, count this uh, from last year's tower, this stuff here, will Get rid of that smell that I'm smelling from all that uh, rich compost manure. It's been sitting at the bottom. It was very wet, so it was very anaerobic at the time. So, let's see. You got to use your own soil when you're doing container growing. You just can't take the stuff out of your backyard and put it in there. You want good aeration and you want good drainage, fast drainage. And here's what I'm going to do for now, since i got a nice little pathway here. I'm going to take this 100% cotton. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just bury it deep within this. So when the plants... And wicking power is about one foot. is about the wicking power of something, of cotton. So bury that in there. And if I forget to water this tower like I've been known to do for a week or a time, I won't have to worry about it because those plants will go right to the moisture that's going to retain after you water, and then it's going to at least go a foot up by wicking material. So the worms that go in there, they'll turn that cotton into, of course, worm castings. These, I'm just going to break apart, throw them in here, think nothing of it. So now, I'm gonna lift this up here, stop my water, and we use the same water. So I'm not wasting as much, right? Yeah. Move it around a little bit. Put this again like that. Boom. Just drop down some more. Let me give you a sense of what it looks like. I'm at six minutes here. I'll edit this down, of course. But here's pretty much what it looks like. That's pretty much what it looks like now. Let's just drop in some more. There we go. Nice, nice, nice. So as you can see, the water is about that high up. And it's coming down. I'm gonna pour some more water in here so I can have this water keep going faster. Uh, 
See all the springtail springtails in there? All right. This is 100% cotton as well. And what am I gonna do? I'm just gonna stuff it right in there. Just like that. Get down there. There. That'll all be gone by the end of this growth season. All right, there's a worm here. Let's see, this guy looks almost like it could be one of those invasive ones. Let's see, where am I here? Where am I here? Let's see. Let's see what kind of worm that is. Now this could be, now this could be a Canadian, that could be a Canadian night crawler. No, or it could be an Alabama jumper, baby. Alabama jumper. Hey, it won't bother much in here. Don't care. What else can we see? This is starting to drop down. And so I'm just gonna keep pouring that bucket over and over. So let's add some more stuff in here. So folks, container gardening is the bomb. Using soil, you know, when we're thinking about aeroponics and hydroponics, that's container growing. I've said that before for all intents and purposes, that's container growing. Let's add some more worm castings. Yeah. Oh, that looks good. Real good. Yeah, baby. All right. Now, I'm gonna top it off with some good soil, and then we're gonna add our eight tomato plants. All right, that's all 55 gallons for eight tomato plants. Hmm. I don't know what kind these are. I didn't um, propagate these ones. Uh, Maria did, so we've got to thank her for that. So let me go get those tomato plants, and I'll be right back. All right, so we got our tomato plants right here, and I'm just going to clip them. Like this. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom. Now... I'll just put it right through this hole here. Now, you know, today's a little bit too sunny to do these because it's always good to give them a, a, a couple days break. A uh, couple days break. I'm gonna take the soil off so it's easier to fit in this hole. I'm just now, gonna stuff this in here like this. Boom, 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 all the way down. Just like that. Ooh, ho, 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 ho. Boom. I have a feeling this is the this is the bomb. 55 gallon drums are the bomb. So basically what I'm doing is just rinsing the roots off. I can't fit it into this hole like that, right? So I gotta rinse the roots off. You wanna give them as little, as little stress as possible. Okay, boom, boom, like, see this soil's dropping even more. That's all right. Boom. See, I got the there. I got two in already. Prep time takes a lot, but once the prep time's done, you can go long periods of time without worrying about your plants. Less weeding, far less weeding. You might have to pull a weed out here and there, but for the most part, now many of us who grow tomatoes know that these will start rooting too, so it'll be a stronger root system. So I'm gonna put that right in this hole here. Nice, right in there like that, boom, boom. And then I'm gonna grab another one. I wonder if I should do two per hole, that'd be crazy. Now I forget where I read, somewhere somebody said that, you know, as long as the roots have a lot of room, the plants themselves can be close to each other. I'm gonna go like this too, boom. Well, I'll mark this too. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna do it, boom. That could be a little too much, but I did it. I'm gonna put you, I'm gonna put two, cause I got enough tomato plants here. I might, instead of eight, I might go 16 guys, all in the same hole. And these guys will, might be a little crazy, I think, but I'm doing it. Boom, boom. All right. Right? 
Boom, boom. I'm gonna leave a little more on this one. I have plenty of time to cut that off when it comes time to. I'm gonna cut one more off because I want a nice big deep root. You know, here's what's interesting, folks. Um, I didn't buy anything. I'm not using any Miracle Grow. And or anything. Lime, maybe. I do put some lime. I will put some lime in here as well. But that's how we do it. Growing food for ourselves, family, and friends should cost us nothing. It should be as free as breathing air because it's a necessity, right? Like air is. It's a necessity. These plants, by the way, Maria, kudos to you. They're beautiful. I'm in the uh, transit stage. I'm getting ready to move out of my house. So a lot going on. Um, with my growing practices. All right, put you in here. All the way in. There. And now, three more. We got two more holes and about one to eight more plants. I'm gonna double. Oh, there's a little cocoon. Where are you here, camp? Cocoon ready to hatch too. When they're dark brown, they're ready to hatch. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, I'm gonna put you in here. Chew to a hole. And spread you out nice. Spread you out like this, boom, boom, boom. then and i'll keep you posted on it all right so i'm just going to close for now and finish this up and i'll take a picture of what it looks like after i'm done and what else i'm going to add to it all right all right so this is going to have 16 tomato plants in it so that's probably equivalent to right a 15 divided by 16 it's almost like each one is planted in a three gallon bucket is that enough i know my sister's going to say you should have just did eight should be happy if I did just one, but we got to experiment. We got to push the limits. This is all new stuff, new technology. And each plant is different. And these, she might be right about that. Time will tell. And um, we'll see. So this is basically what it looks like for now. All right, so I put some paper down over that. And then I topped it with some more of that rabbit manure. And then, of course, I added some soil on top of that. All right, so that's it for this video. Notice I topped it off with some good-looking Look good looking soil. So when somebody goes and looks, they'll say, wow, Mark, you use really good soil. They have no clue what I threw into this darn thing, which is more about, again, feeding the red wigglers. Feed the reds, they'll feed your tomato plants, is how I think. And I used to put like a tube down in here. Uh, instead, you saw, here's, oh, here's centipede a centipede type. type looking thing. Is that a good or bad thing? Let me know. Um, I used to put, there's one, two, there's a couple of them. I don't know if I Three. should keep, they're all coming up. So I don't know if I should keep, I used to have like an aeration tube in here. Now I just have those rags as you saw. So hopefully there'll be enough air coming within here. All right, so here we got tomatoes doing good. It's about two weeks. Roughly got one little tomato over there. Got some kale over here. This is tied into the dust bucket system as well. This will lift up. So no matter wherever this one is, that's the level of all these all the way down. So let's see here. See, as that goes out there, I got that. And so before I water, even the same with this tower here, this is just so I can drain it if I had to drain it. Because the water level is right about here. So this one's already full. And then we're siphoning from here, it goes down to here, then to this one, all internally. This one, and so water's about right there. Remains right there. If I wanted to drain it totally, that's what this side one is for, to drain it totally. To get some of that anaerobic water back out of there. And we'll see, we'll keep an eye on this tower. Again, these are all separate in their own right, but they're tied into the drainage system. So one day I picture when you go to a store, if let's say these were kale, you could go and just buy the garden then a person can grow their kale at home and pick at it as they need it. So this looks like it's doing pretty good. 
uh, let's see how much water is in here. This one you could drain. So we have right about here is where the water is on that 55 gallon drum. Very simple build. And these guys, I had them covered in shade for a little bit. Now they're gonna be full sun. So. All right, folks, that's the end. Let's remember, we will most certainly heal this planet one urban farmer at a time. God bless, over and out.